for the latest Amiga European Masters prices, check out starsports.bet or try our app. We're paying six places, one quarter the odds for this tournament. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Light the candle, tiger! Hi there, welcome along to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. It's Bruce Millington, Steve Palmer and Star Sports Glenn Day looking back on a great weekend for Rory McIlroy and looking ahead to what could be a great week for Rory McIlroy because we've only got one event, it's on the European Tour and you might think, oh blimey, that's not very exciting but there's a really, really good field headed by none other than the king of the FedEx Cup, Rory McIlroy, £15 million richer has he gone off to spend it on some wild celebration? No, he's travelled across to Switzerland to play golf. So the lads will be assessing his chances and obviously bringing you all the best bets on that very quirky tournament at a beautiful uh, golf course up in the Swiss mountains. Before that though, um, we'll have a look back on what happened last week. Like I say, Rory McIlroy now 15 million better off. He won the handicap. Steve, how, how, if that had just been a level stakes thing, how far would he have won by? I mean, he absolutely would have romped to victory, wouldn't he? Yeah, he won by three shots, didn't he, in the 72 hole market. Um, beat Xander Schifele. So the first and second in the FedEx Cup were the first and second in the, um, yeah, the first thing on the leaderboard was the actual 72 hole leader. It was remarkable how it all panned out. I mean, it all went really, really well, didn't it? But, um, you know, I, I don't think FedEx should be getting too cocky about that because it, it, it could have gone the other way. Um, yeah, you know, they'll be thrilled with the way that, uh, I mean, Shefali and Macro were the keys to the tournament. They they made the charges. Thomas and Cantley uh, faltered in front. Kupka held his ground. So then you had this wonderful tournament that developed between five of the best players in the world. FedEx doing cartwheels. But, um, you know, it could have easily gone the other way if Thomas and Cantley had made, made, made better starts. You still had sort of 20 players that were um, out of the tournament by the halfway stage. So I'm not entirely convinced by the system, but uh, certainly the, on, the, on the sample of one, it was a big success. Was it a success for Star Sports with Rory getting the job done, Glenn? Yeah, obviously, uh, being my selection last week, we uh, we dodged him. So he's generally eight to one. He's only half a point under, but that was enough to uh, stave off the Panthers. So yeah, it's a good result in here. Um, yeah, then reiterate what Steve said there. The the stroke play and the tournament results were four of the players would have been in the frame in both. So That's said, a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, so. But, so, sample of one, not enough to go on, but I'm sure it'd be the same next year. And well done, Tipping Rory. Did you have a magnificent bet? Did you win enough to be able to get a decorator in? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. But I'm still still planning to do it myself. <laughs> Honestly, don't, mate. OK, uh, any other things to note, Steve, from the Tour Championship? Anyone performed spectacularly badly? Anyone maybe throw down a market that they might be having a good year uh, when the US Tour resumes in a couple of weeks? Well, I think the first thing to say is for Rory McIlroy, that was a massive victory. I mean, he needed to draw a line under the open debacle as, as soon as possible. He had that chance at Southwind in the WGC and uh, unfolded in front of Brooks Cooper. So I think there are a few question marks developing about his temperament. And he's now won the biggest tournament since the Open and, um, and, and draw a line under it. I mean, it, there was a little bit of fragility. Bogey's at um, 14 and 15. But that, that par part on the 16th, he, he, he was facing three bogeys in a row. The pressure was rising. He, he hold that par part at 16 and then birdied 17, 18. Yeah, I think this is a massive win. I think Port, Port Rush is in the past now. Everyone's talking about McElroy's amazing statistical performance in 2019. His strokes gain stats are, are remarkable. Um, probably the most consistent campaign he's ever had. So, um, yeah, I think for McElroy, he goes from strength to strength now. Uh, in terms of others, Shafale, we always we didn't really learn much about Shafale. We know he's a, a rock solid performer in, in big competitions, but again, impressive. Uh, Thomas, Justin Thomas, a little bit affected by the the lead. He admitted that the Thursday lead freaked him out a bit. He, he, he missed a few tiddlers early on. He'll be really disappointed. Uh, and obviously, can't they? Oh, oh. Don't, don't don't talk to me about Patrick, can't they? I mean, his short game performance over the first two days was poor, and then he lost his entire game over the weekend. I mean, you, when you put all your eggs in one basket, and then you realise that the the basket's got a hole in it, then it's quite a distressing uh, distressing week that was. He's gone from Patrick, can't they, to Patrick, can't back, as far as I'm concerned. Glenn, anything else that you noticed from last week that you wanted to bring to our attention? Yeah, just uh, Dustin Johnson, uh, former world number one, very disappointing again. I was looking at his figures, hasn't had uh, finished higher than twentieth since the PGA Championship um, last last week on the stroke play, and was it went around with uh, Lucas Glover agreed to play in less than three hours, which they achieved apparently. So, <laughs> it's, uh, if that's what he's looking for, at least they speed golf. Perhaps that's the way forward. I don't know, but 
as opposed to the uh, Bryson DeChambeau way of doing it. should never take more than three hours. If you've got a nice clear course in front of you, you can whiz around in no time. Um, let's have a quick word with Eric, not a word with him, because you're not on the line, but a word about Eric Van Royen. A victory, Steve, for consistency. I think he's had something like 10 top 10s in, in 20 starts this year, or 10 top 20s anyway. And he finally got over the line, didn't he? Um, obviously a bit of a heartbreaker for you because he thwarted uh, Fitzpatrick, didn't he? But Van Royen's been on the go all year and he's become quite a force, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, that is just a huge monkey off his back because uh, he's no spring chicken. He turns 30 in February. I mean, I remember backing him uh, for Tashwani Opens through the years when uh, he's got off to really fast starts and then at, at poor final rounds. And that's that's been uh, the Van, Van Ruin career. I mean, gets out the blocks quickly and then um, has found the pressure too much. And uh, I was hoping that was going to be the case again uh, on Sunday. And um he, he was fantastic. He was fantastic for 16 holes. He had his little wobble on 17. He three-putted 17, opened the door again to Fitzy. Um, but that, that that birdie putt on the 18th, you know, I just, um, you know, I was so impressed with the way he held that. A tricky downhill putt for, you, for your first win. Yeah, I bet you were really uh, impressed, Steve, as he cost you <laughs> a winning tip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an absolute killer. I, I thought he'd miss. And all credit to him, he, he, he held his composure uh, finally and, and, and got the job done. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think Fitzpatrick, yeah, you, you don't really want to get me started on that because that, that'll be 30 minutes of the podcast gone. I I, I think Fitzy was really unlucky last week. I mean, he, 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 he didn't put a foot wrong. Didn't put a foot wrong. Did you see the, the, the approach to 14? I, I, did, I honestly I actually didn't see any of it, Steve. I didn't see oh, any okay. of the tournament. I mean, on the eighth hole, he could have got a free drop. That's a long story. But the 14th hole was the key one. He hit a perfect approach. It's the classic when it's in the air. I'll be right. Oh, baby. You know, Freddie Couple style. It, 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 it's going to be, you know, tapping range birdie. And then it clatters into the flag. It spins off the green. And he chips um, chips past the flag, makes bogey. So a birdie turned into a bogey. Um, and then he had a mud ball on the 16th. All right, you said don't get you started, and I somehow <laughs> have got you started. So so let's just stop it there. Bad luck, Steve. Um, Glenn, I guess that's quite a good swing for Star Sports and a bad one for punters Van Roy and thwarting Fitzpatrick like that. Yeah, definitely. Fitzpatrick was a uh, was, uh, main um, one for the punters. Van Roy, we see a bit of each way money for him, always do, so because he's been so consistent. But I was pleased for him, as Steve said. Deserves that first win and show plenty of bottle on the last, so no, fair play. Fair okay. Play. okay, we haven't done audience questions for quite a while, so I thought it'd be quite a good one. We've only one tournament this week and I put out a tweet and we've got great responses, absolutely loads, so we'll try and get as many of these done as possible. First one from Lee, how much would Rory pocket from his 15 million payout last week once you take away caddies, fees, tax, agents, coaches, etc.? Uh, who's best equipped to answer that one? I'll have a go. Go on then. Well, uh, I mean, he's got to give 1.5 million to Harry Diamond, isn't he? Ten percent. I mean, I've, I've been some um, some sort of uh, funny wisecracks during the week about his, how Harry Diamond has earned more than Jordan Spieth this year, because uh, obviously McIlroy's been really consistent, and then he's taken 10 percent of the FedEx Cup money. So, uh, yeah, Harry Diamond's laughing, laughing his head off, bits and pieces to the others. So, um, yeah, I suppose the tax man takes a hearty chunk. Uh, you might end up with eight or nine, might you? Yeah, yeah, eight, eight, nine, eight, nine. Yeah, it's certainly a, a healthy check. That'd do, wouldn't it? Steve, when did you last visit the pylon? Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's did Patrick. you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a really tough one to go over. I needed to get to the pylon and get to clear my head and, uh, and then took on board some lager beers to get over. I mean, that, yeah, don't Sorry, get Sorry, just quickly, for those who don't know what the pylon is, uh, just, just quickly recap what the pylon is, Steve. There's a pile on a sort of five to ten minute walk from my house where I can go and I guarantee not to bump into anyone in the world you know no one hangs around pylons particularly this one it's quite a remote location so whenever i need total peace of mind i go there to um usually to get over golfing setbacks oh you hadn't been for a while had you no 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 i mean honestly you really don't want to get me started because that that was about as unlucky as a bet can possibly get okay there you go rich it was last sunday uh who is the best golfer in the world when they're on their best form says owen collins who do you think glenn if, if there was one tournament all the good ones are there say a very fair course for everybody who would you be backing if they all ha if they're all on their a game well a month ago i definitely would have said brooks Kepka, but now rory's got the job done and from being up there I, that's what i used to think so i'd say rory now definitely okay adam says which golfs have been the biggest disappointment this season and which was the biggest surprise steve biggest disappointment 
Biggest disappointment probably Cameron Champ, who we thought was going to be oh, an absolute yeah. world beater and still has time to be an absolute world beater, but he got injured at uh, Sawgrass and hasn't been the same player since. So, yeah, I'd definitely say him. Was that, was that two questions? I'll, just uh, I'll ask Glenn, who's been the biggest surprise for you, Glenn, this season? Who's, who's performed yeah. better than you expected? Well, I don't know about surprise as such, but three guys we'd never heard of at the start of the year. Uh, Matthew Wolfe, Colin Morikawa and Victor Hovland. Three good youngsters, two of them already won on tour. Pitts Hovland now got his card. I'm sure it won't be long before he wins. So as a unit, those three guys, because we didn't know they were at the start of the year. Well, that's extraordinary because Pete Selby says, could you ask Steve and Glenn for three players on each tour to look out for next year? Could be established coming back to their best or youngsters like Wolf, Morikawa and Hovland. Extraordinary. So out of those three, who do you think will have the best year next year, Steve? Uh, I think Morikara would be most consistent, but I think Victor Hovland is the best of the bunch, actually. He's just earned his uh, tour card at um, Corn Ferry uh, Tour Final. So, yeah, I'd say Hovland is slightly better than the other two. And then you mustn't forget Justin Sir, who uh, was another star amateur who's expected to make a big impression. He's the one that hasn't done anything yet, but obviously he's the one you get the big odds on. What's his name? Justin Sir, S-U-H. Oh, right, OK. Who do you like best out of the young guns, Glenn? I agree exactly with what Steve said. I think Morikara is is and will be the most consistent, but for his all round game, I like watching Victor Hovland already. I okay. think he's quite Mark Jordan says, can Victor Hovland make the Ryder Cup team? What do you think, Glenn? Uh, I'll say very, very tough ask. Um, probably coming into it too late. He'd have to win a couple of times, I'd imagine, to get on there. But if he plays well, possible wild card, I don't know. I think it'd be very tough. Okay. D Davog McKee, sorry if I've mispronounced your uh, first name, says, what was Rory's season rating? For me, it was 5 out of 10. FedEx win only overshadows the fact that he had no top five finishes in any of the majors, and that's what he should be judged on. Very quickly, lads, what would you give Rory McIlroy out of 10, Steve? I'll give him 7 out of 10 because consistency-wise, it was amazing. Statistically, it was amazing, but obviously he flopped in the majors. So, yes, yeah, 7 out of 10. What's your rating, Glenn? As Steve was saying, I wrote down 7 as well. I mean, he had three wins on the year. Uh, loads of top tens. I, I don't think you can. He can't be a five. He's got to be a seven. Okay. Uh, why aren't tournament officials cracking down harder on slow play? Says Russ. If every golfer had a microchip on their bag, their pace could be closely monitored. Steve, does this bother you, slow play? Or are you pretty sanguine about it? Oh no, we discuss it every week. It bothers me greatly, but um, yeah, I'm not. I don't know how the the, the the microchip would work. You'd have to have one in the ball as well, wouldn't you? When they're close to the ball, that's an interesting idea. But I'm not sure about it. I, th I think you just need marshals. Yeah, OK. Paul Gowans, are there too many birdie fest tournaments on the PGA Tour these days? The lower the winning score, the more boring to watch. And it is also harder to find the winner as it doesn't test players all round game. Do you agree with that, Glenn? I agree with that 100%. Yeah, I've said that before. There should be more winning scores of like three or four under. Uh, it's, it's mainly the US Tour, obviously. The European Tour uh, don't have so many of them birdie fest ones. But yeah, I agree with that totally. Wes says, Steve, have you embraced the new craft ale phenomenon or are you an out-and-out -out lager man? Oh, I haven't embraced the new, the new phenomenon. No, a lot, a lot of the craft ales taste disgusting. You get these sort of uh, snobs who think they're so clever because they're drinking the craft ale. I've, I, 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 had, I had one the other night with a, with a fella and uh, you know, he's, he's telling me all about it. Oh, it's gravity-based, it's gravity-poured, blah, blah, blah. But no, they taste like absolute ditch water, most of them, don't they? Mm, blimey. Uh, Grant says, having seen Peters finally get over the line, does Steve think the time will ever come for Matsuyama? He's been a bit disappointing this year, hasn't he? Yeah, but he actually showed a bit of putting improvement the other day. He was holding some absolute bombs, wasn't he, um, in Tour Championship. So, uh, yeah, I think Matty Armour will win again. Patience is a virtue. Danny says, what does the future hold for the European Tour? Lack of support from big-name European players. Is it becoming a feeder tour for the PGA Tour? What do you think, Glenn? Because, I mean, you've been giving your tournament rating everywhere, and there's been some really low ones, haven't there? Yeah, 100% with that. Uh, there was an interview with Martin Keimer uh, when they'd done the uh, end of fire somewhere, and he was basically saying it's, it's like a two-tier uh, tour now. And he said it should almost be a world tour. And if it was um, scheduled, so you had to almost stop over points, I'm not sure it particularly worked. But, but yeah, a feeder for the PGA. It's like second tier in football, same thing. You win a tour and perhaps you get promoted somewhere along those. It's definitely going that way. And I'm sure it can happen somewhere along the line. Okay. It's definitely so yeah, absolutely. Okay, a couple of people, uh, including Warren, have been asking about race to Dubai. Who do you fancy, guys? Steve, uh, Warren thinks John Rahm will get it done. Well, yeah, yeah, John Rahm. We, we tipped John Rahm at the start of the year. So, yeah, he's in third place. Be pretty confident he could finish the job from there, yeah. Okay. Uh, why does Steve clutch a ball, asks Ben. Do you clutch a ball, Steve? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know you could see it. I, 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 I mean, I clutch a, I got a few stress balls that I use, um, you know, uh, during my working week. And, uh, yeah, I... Uh, 
you know, that, that's my purple ball. <laughs> do you remember <laughs> the? Do you remember that legendary stretch? It wasn't a ball; it was a cube, wasn't it? Do you remember? In, it, in the it, office. Yeah, it was the blue square it, cube, and uh, and in order, <laughs> do you remember, in order to decide who who was going to get the tees. This is when we worked on the sports desk. You had to do keepy uppies with the cube, didn't you? Do you remember? And the and one who got the lowest score had to get the tees. Yeah, it's not easy bouncing a square, is it? No, no, I mean, stress, stress balls are fantastic. Yeah, just keep squeezing away. You can't be stressed. Okay, right then. Please could you ask, could Jin Young Ko dominate women's golf like Tiger did years ago? And do Brooks and Rory have a proper... Could Brooks and Rory have a proper dominant rivalry? Glenn, you're our women's golf expert. Well, I put one once. Um, I really wouldn't be able to answer. I'm not okay. in a position. I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Could Brooks and Rory dominate things next year, do you think? Uh, no, I just think there are too many top quality players out there. It would never be just about the two. There'll always be other players involved. Um, as you say, with these youngsters breaking through, who knows? They might make it a threesome somewhere along the line. <laughs> okay. And both of you from deck, if you could spend a day as any golfer, who would it be, Steve? Tiger Woods, just to have that feeling of um, you know, knowing you're going to die a legend. Okay. Glenn, who would you like to be? Adam Scott? Uh, no, not him again. I'm going to go Rory McIlroy at the moment. Just, would it be nice to uh, see your bank balance with 15 million paid in? I think that'd be fantastic. Wouldn't be bad, would it? Uh, but, 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 what effect will this Sunday collapse have on Brooks Kopka? Will it spur him on to become dominant force next season? What do you think about that, Glenn? Yeah, I think so. Um, it just showed that he's a human. I mean, he's been called robotic and everything over the last couple of months. Um, he was put under pressure and he cracked a bit. Um, he'll come back, I'm sure. His game's too good to go missing uh, and I'm sure he'll contend in all the majors again next year. OK, and finally, Steve, what are your thoughts on the soon-to-be-released Cadbury's Orange Twirl? Do you have a view on that? I didn't know about that. No, I'm quite excited by that. Yeah? The Cadbury's Orange Twirl. Yeah, yeah, well, Sounds I'll look right. out for that. Yeah, yeah, exciting times. What is your go-to chocolate bar? If you walk into a, a paper shop and you fancy a bit of chocolate, what will you opt for? Peppermint Aero. Yeah. It never lets you down. You have that added sort of breath freshness, which you, uh, always helps. How about you, Glenn? I try not to think about chocolate these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, touched a nerve there. Right then, let's kick on with uh, our preview of the Omega European Masters. Starts crack of dawn tomorrow at Cron Circier, so you're better off getting your bets on tonight. And who can we back? Here is the uh, latest show of betting from Star Sports. Uh, rating a six for this one this week. Uh, quarter the odds the first six places. Uh, four to one Rory McIlroy. Eight to one Matthew Fitzpatrick. Twelve to one Tommy Fleetwood. Twenty two to one Alex Noren and Danny Willett. Twenty five to one Eric Van Ryan and Matt Wallace. Thirty to one Andrea Pavan and Bern Beesberger. And on thirty three is Lucas Bieregard, Rory Sabatini, Sergio Garcia, and Thomas Peters. Did you say quarter the six? Alter the six, oh, yeah. That's, that's better than normal, isn't it? It certainly is, yes. Great stuff. Right then, well, we'd better start with Rory, the raging hot favourite. Steve, uh, shortish, there might be a bit of nine to two, but generally speaking, I think the industry goes four to one best. Does that do it for you? No, it doesn't do it for me. I mean, it's a long journey from uh, Georgia to Switzerland, FedEx Cup celebrations, lots of jet lag, questionable motivation. Um I mean, the reasons that he's playing in the tournament are um, are obvious. I mean, uh, Amiga is one of his big sponsors. He didn't play in the Amiga Dubai Desert Classic this year, which would have annoyed him. So he's going to play in this one. And he needs to play in another three, including this one, another two after this, uh, regulation European Tour events to retain his European Tour card. You know, they have to play a certain minimum number of events to, to keep their car and they obviously keep his Ryder Cup um credentials so yeah I, I don't really see the motivation other than um just turning up for McElroy this week uh, i think he'd go into autopilot he's got his family with him i think practice will be on the back burner uh, there's a few thunderstorms in the forecast as well so it'll be a bit of a stop start event which will make it even more difficult for him to concentrate so i think all things considered four to one is, is not that exciting i can let him win at that price without being too bothered glenn could you see him absolutely romping to victory or do you share steve's concerns uh, so, same concerns as Steve, really. Four to one. I can't have him. It's a little step, you know. Um, only three times in the last decade has Rory McIlroy come over to play a Euro Tour event after playing in the US Tour event. And on two of those occasions, he missed the cut. So, it would suggest that, yeah, he's here because of uh, sponsor needs and all that. And he'll, he'll perform to some degree, but at four to one, you can let him go. Are you, have you priced him up to miss the cut? 
Uh, we haven't, no. Hmm. I might have a little look at that if anyone else. Eh? He will make the cut. You can't say that. In any tournament, anything can happen, Glenn. Why are you so confident? I'm, particularly with your stat. I know, I know, but he will make the cut this week. All right then. Right then, Steve. You are putting up one, two, three, four selections. Who's the main man for you? Yeah, four selections, and the main man is Alexander Noren, uh, or Alex Noren, as I think he prefers to be called. Uh, this is a prolific European Tour champion coming to the boil nicely now. He finished 12th for greens in regulation in the Scandinavian Invitation last week. He actually hit more greens than Eric Van Roon and Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, but he had a cold putter. And putting's been a, a disappointment this season for, for Noren, but traditionally uh, his flat stick work is a strength. In the past, he's putted really well at Cran Cercier. He was uh, champion there in 2009 and in 2016. Uh, much of the talk this week about Fitzpatrick going for his three in a row, but Noren's going for a hat trick of Cran's titles as well. The final three days of the Scandinavian invitation provided a real confidence booster. He struggled in round one, made a double bogey at the seventh, but he closed with three consecutive rounds of 67. That's come hot on, the, hot on the heels of 11th place in the Open Championship, 12th place in the WGC uh, in Memphis. So there's been uh, significant signs of life from Noren. He's a 10-time European Tour champion. He made an excellent Ryder Cup debut last year, and he needs a strong end to this season. You talk about McElroy perhaps not being focused this week. Noren is entirely focused. He's 47th in the world rankings. Uh, he needs to finish in the top 50 of the world rankings at the end of the year to, to book his master spot for next year. Uh, so Kranz is crucial to that aim. He's massively course proven there. That 2009 win with his maiden European Tour victory, four top tens in his last six Kranz visits and his only challenge tour victory came in Switzerland as well. So I think everything pointing to Noren at 25 to one being the best value. Oh, that's a very strong case. Glenn, how many are you putting up this week? I've got four as well, Bruce. Okay, who's your main man? Uh, my main man, I'm sticking the same guy up last week, Andrea Pavan. Uh, so keep the faith. Um, opened up last week in Sweden with a couple of bogeys and a double bogey. He found himself five over par after 14 holes. He then played the last three rounds in less shots than everyone else bar Matthew Pavon. And he was one better than the silver winner, Eric Van Royen. 16 under par for his last 57 holes, and his last round 64 also included a double bogey. It's an attacking, birdie-making mentality that I like, and um, if you apply that to Kranz, I think it's more that it can work. Two previous visits here have resulted in missed cuts, but at the time he was ranked 272nd and 140th in the world going into those. He now sits one spot outside the world's top 75, and surely has eyes on a top 50 spot. Uh, British Masters, he had driving distance average of 261 yards, and last week in Sweden, 312 yards, showing that he can adapt his game to the demands of the course in front of him. Uh, driving accuracy could be better, but uh, around here, if we don't stray too far, you can get away with it. He did rank number one in driving accuracy at the BMW Open earlier in the year. Uh, ranked number one in scrambling at the Czech Masters, and ninth last week in Sweden. And on his first visit stateside in the Barracuda Championship, ranked number one in putting. Uh, second two win at the BMW International Open. Tied fourth at the Scottish Open. Tied third at the Czech Masters. And last week's final three rounds have proved the Italians' all-round game is in top order. And he can buck the trend of winners who have played well here prior to victory. Righty-ho. OK, Pavan is Glenn's uh, main selection. Steve, who are your other three apart from Noren? Next best is Alexander Bjork. Uh, another Alexander, he's, he's a bit more serious than Alex Noren. He likes to be called Alexander, likes his full name. And he's a very serious on the golf course as well. He, the way he goes about his business, very tidy, efficient golfer, strong all-rounder. Lack of driving distance is uh, his only real handicap. But um, that's not a problem at Kranz. It's a short course, it's at altitude. Uh, he tied with Noren last week in 12th spot in the greens and regulation stats. Struck his ball really well. Closed with a 64 for, for 20th place. Um, and like Noren, you know, a more typical putting performance this week would make him a massive runner. Uh, he was banging contention on his Kranz debut in, in 2017, despite being a European Tour rookie rookie maiden, ranked 127th in the world. He was banging contention, then made some late errors and finished uh, 16th, but a really respectable debut. And then last year on his return, he opened with a 69, really solid first round, and then got food poisoning, struck with food poisoning overnight and had to withdraw. So, um, yeah, I think this course is perfect for Bjork, and he dropped a really huge hint on, on Sunday. Blimey. Who else have you got? And then, yeah, two more against the field. Lucas Bejerigard, Lucas Beergarden, uh, Denmark's number one. He's produced some magnificent golf this, uh, this year on the biggest stages. I mean, he beat Justin Thomas, Henrik Stenson, and Tiger Woods in the, uh, in the match play. 
Uh, he was 21st at Augusta, 16th in both the USPGA and the Open, uh, and he loves crowns. He, he, he was 9th in 2017 when he was ranked 414th in the world, and then uh, last year he lost a playoff to Fitzpatrick. So, uh, yeah, Beer Garden, if he brings his uh, his major form to, to crowns, is, is a huge player at 40-1. to 1. And then, yeah, my final selection is Andrea Pavan. Like, uh, like Glenn, I'm keeping faith with Pavan. I don't think his hot streak is over. Uh, you know, one in Germany, third in Prague, uh, fourth in the Scottish Open. Absolutely buzzing. And that first round 74 was a shock to, to us and, and to him. Um, as, he, as, as Glenn says, he got straight back on the bike. And uh, yeah, I think he's, he's, he's dangerous anywhere. OK, both the lads are back uh, tipping Pavan. Who are your other three? He's your main selection, isn't he, Glenn? But who are your other three? Yeah, second one of the pup is uh, Gavin Green. Uh, 2017 Aiton Tilled, a merit winner. Uh, finished second in the co Open Indian Open that year. And also won the Taiwan Masters. Uh, his first season on the European Tour last year, he only posted two top tens, already has three this season. Uh, recent form figures, tied 37, tied 8, tied 9, miscut, tied 58, tied 16, decent nick. Uh, he opened the Czech Masters a couple of starts back with an 8 under 64, but disappointingly dropped away and also started with a 64 in Sweden last week. Uh, 71 on Saturday ruined any thoughts of victory, but closed with a nice 65. Uh, carries good memories from here last year where he finished 12th, uh, only a fine around 72, so he moves out on a place. Uh, he's long enough off the tee here to take advantage of all the scoring holes, the short par fours and the par fives. Uh, ranked number one in driving acts at the Irish Open, number one in greens in regulation at British Masters and the Irish Open, and third in putting at the Indian Open in Andalusia Masters. I think he's got the tools to win here. A maiden European Tour victory, not far away, but he does have to prove he can put four rounds together. Uh, number three, I'm going to go for Jamie Donaldson. Uh, only played nine events so far this year following a wrist injury. Uh, four consecutive cuts in the middle of the season were followed by a ninth place in the Scottish Open where he struck the ball really well. Uh, five weeks off, returned at the Czech Masters where he was a previous winner but missed the cut. Um, but again, another good ball strike in week last week was rewarded with a fifth, a fifth place finish, excuse me. Uh, he's posted seven top 25s and three top 10 finishes at Cran and had a near miss there in 2011. Uh, three time tour winner, uh, 2015 Thailand Golf Championship winner, a 2014 Ryder Cup winner, where he famously hit the winning shot in the singles against Keegan Bradley. Uh, he won't be bobbing it his way around here. But if his iron place is, good, is as good as it was in Scotland and Sweden, uh, the other 25 to 1 can uh, see each way back as rewarded. And the last one I go for is uh, the Frenchman, Mike Lorenzo Vera. Uh, won the Challenge Tour season ending grand final in 2007 when he was just 22, shooting a course record 62 in the first round. Uh, on and off the tour um, until 2015 where he gained full rights. Uh, but only recently started showing good consistency. Uh, played well here last year. Was in with a major chance of winning. Led with um, five holes to go, but a seven at one of the par fives derailed his chances. Only played ten tournaments so far this year, so he'll be fresher than most. Uh, form figures of the year 27th, 2nd, 48th, 34th, 5th, 16th, 2nd, 9th, 28th, miscut in the open. And you put that alongside his course form of 14th, 19th, Withdrawn 12th, 30th, and 3rd, suggested being for a good week. He's solid in all departments. Putting is his strength, five times ranked in the top 15 in his last seven events. And he can enjoy another good week in the mountains. Lovely stuff. Well done, chaps. Right, then let's spin through some of the other leading contenders because there are some big names this week. We've, we've discussed Rory's chances. The guys are both lukewarm. Glenn, I'd better ask you about Fitzpatrick because if I ask Steve, he'll start going on about how unlucky he was again last week. Fitzpatrick, can he win it this week and do the hat trick, do you think, Glenn? He definitely can, yeah. I mean, he obviously likes it round here too. We suggest that he did have a bit of luck on his side last year. Obviously, uh, as I mentioned there, Lorenzo Vera giving away shots late on. Um, but again, he's won 8 to 1, and after disappointment last week, definitely leave him alone. Uh, Steve, did you have a good look at uh, Tommy Fleetwood at around about 12s? Yeah, a little bit flat in the playoffs, very underwhelming crowns record. And again, like McElroy, motivational reasons are, are not obvious. You know, I suppose you could say race to Dubai, but I, I can't see Fleetwood being at full full throttle for this. Basically, for the elite, the next big tournament is the BMW PGA Championship at Wentworth. And I, I feel like this is the sort of time, you know, if you've got to test any equipment, now's the time to do it and then get yourself ready for Wentworth. OK, we've seen signs that Danny Willett is close to a return to form. Glenn, might that continue this week? 
Yeah, definitely. No, a good form here. Previous winner as well. The game's definitely getting better. Uh, sick at the open. Um, yeah, chances at, at, say, at 22, 25 to 1. Yeah, could be, could be a decent bet. Steve, I see you, you describe in the Racing Post saying Matt Wallace is the feisty Londoner. What can he do here? Yeah, they don't come much feistier than, uh, than Matt Wallace, but he's been inactive for a month and he's not played for a month. Uh, so probably a bit rusty and his transform figures are, are 70, 50, 51. So, um, yeah, it doesn't uh, beg to be backed. OK, Eric Van Ryan, can he follow up last week's win, Glenn? No, uh, I think it's virtually impossible. First time winners habitually, for me, they missed the cut. Upon him, but he'd be my bet to miss the cut this week. As much as I like him, he's consistent. But I think you you have a big letdown emotionally once you've got that, got over the line. Yeah, he's turned it. I think you should always have two or three weeks off, personally. Um, yeah. I'd be more at the other end. Okay. He doesn't chip very well, does he, uh, Glenn? His, his major weakness is chipping, and you need to scramble well at Crowns. in a very yeah, small green. Yeah. Yeah. Up, upturned saucer greens are very unreceptive, so you'll be a lot of chipping this week for everyone, and he's not very good at that. OK, Steve, talking about feisty, I mean, Sergio Garcia, one of the uh, audience questions earlier was, who's been a disappointment this year? I mean, he's completely gone to pot, hasn't he, the man? Yeah, since the Masters, he's been been terrible, and it is, um, you know, his... Uh, behavior has been rather poor as well and he's been <laughs> smashing up tee boxes and throwing clubs at his poor old brother who's been his caddy um yeah i don't know what's going on is he, he likes it here he's got a home in crans so he should feel nice and relaxed at crans he's got a half decent record not a regular player in the event but um yeah i don't know big old price for sergio isn't it, it, it of course he knows well but um yeah i don't know i don't know if i can trust him mentally he's a complete head case isn't he if he wins will you kick yourself do you think or will you just accept that you know there was there's not enough recent evidence to back him is there no, 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 I won't kick myself. He wasn't the last name off. I'll only kick myself if the last name off. Yeah, your Austrians are quite hard. Who's the to, last uh, name off? Wiesberger. No, Matthias Schwab was the last name off. So but, yeah, both the Austrians. I'm surprised we haven't got a Wiesberger mention out of uh, Glenn yet. Um, obviously an Austrian playing in the Alps there. So, uh, yeah, I think Wiesberger and Schwab would be quite difficult to, um, to, to get off your staking pan. OK, anyone else you think we should be back in top 20? Someone who might outrun their odds, Glenn, anyone? No, no one else may just stick with my, my four. OK, well, let's recap who those four are. It's the European Masters. You need to place your bets before you go to bed tonight because they tee off at 6.40am on Thursday. Steve Palmer, your selections are... Alex Noren, Alexander Bjork, Lucas Bejerigard and Andrea Pavan. And Glenn, who do you fancy? Andrea Pavan, Gavin Green, Jamie Donaldson and Mike Lorenzo Vera. Okie dokes. Right then, what's happening, Steve, between uh, now and, uh, well, what's happening over the next few days? You're just going to get your head down and enjoy some golf. It must be nice when there's only one tournament for you, isn't it? It means you, you only have to watch eight hours of golf rather than 16 in a day. <laughs> no, that's it. I've got a very tricky weekend. Though. I've got my, 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 my wife's granddad's 90th birthday party on the Saturday afternoon. So, uh, yeah, I've got a long drive with a, with a three-month-old in the car and he hates the car. And a four-year-old uh, daughter also gets very bored extremely quickly. So, yeah, big, big, big challenges over the weekend. I need my golfers to play well to keep spirits up. Oh, blimey. Glenn, anything good happening to you? No, I'm, I'm off on Thursday, so it'll be uh, an afternoon on the sofa. I love this tournament, so I'm watching that. And then it's my mum's birthday at the weekend, so... What are you going to get her? Uh, I haven't thought about that yet. Well, think so, about uh, it now. What are you getting her? I don't, I've got no idea, Bruce. No idea. <laughs> OK. Chocolate 12 things. Oh, they, they orange 12. Orange 12, yeah, yeah. Job done. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Dave Clark is in the chair next week when he and the guys will be looking ahead to the Porsche European Open in Hamburg. We've got a football postcast on Thursday, and I will be here with Keels and various other judges to look ahead to the racing this weekend. That's out on Friday, so plenty of great postcasts. Hopefully, we'll see you again next Wednesday for another Racing Post Golf Postcast. For the latest Amiga European Masters prices, check out starsports.bet or try our app. We're paying six places, one quarter the odds for this tournament. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Give them the whole.